I mean this one, yeah. Ah, okay. This result is uh, Pfefferman used this result, which was before him, uh, to to prove properties of this alpha star. But ha s s somehow Mendelssohn doesn't mention it, this one. Okay. But, but not everything which is in logic is mentioned in Mendelssohn. So yeah. So but how, how, how you prove it? You need na nature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, can, I can tell you how this proved. So if, if alpha, uh, it, yeah, well, one sentence. So um, we are dealing with a finite number of axioms of piano reference. So it's induction scheme restricted to uh, finitely many instances. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these instances have fixed arithmetical complexity, let's say n big. Yeah. And for this n big, we have a truth predicate. So within piano reference, there is a truth predicate for formulas of complexity up to n big. It's not scary. It's, it's, it, it, well, it's, uh, well, it's, 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 it's folklore after Tarski, so it's, I, I, I think it's Mastowski, but doesn't, doesn't matter. And uh, then uh, one does the following. If, if there is a proof of contradiction from, let's say, this finite fragment of, of, uh, uh, of PA, we, we use it, uh, we write it, let's say, in Gensen format, yeah, and eliminate and cuts and we obtain a proof in which complexity of every formula is restricted mm -hmm. by this n big <coughs> because uh, there are no cuts and the n formula is contradiction so mm -hmm. the only complication comes from the axioms and they are essentially n big or n big plus one or something like this mm -hmm. and then uh, using this truth predicate we prove by induction on the depth of this proof that everything which occurs there is true in the sense of this truth <laughs> Well, it's it's technical, so it's really a technical technical proof if one writes it down in detail because it deals with this formalization of cut elimination theorem and. Do you need do you need cut elimination theorem? Right. If you have yes. a predicate, I think. Yes, yes. One one uh, one needs one needs somehow uh, the notion of proof with restricted complexity of formulas here. Ah, because what do we do if there are no complex formulas? Exactly, exactly. So the, this shows the usefulness of those Gensen style proofs. Yeah, of course, of course. That's one of the first applications okay, of this. Okay, but there's, there's no need to show this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, uh, let's let's continue towards our further further counterexamples. Well, okay, this alpha star can be considered as a kind of uh, unwanted thing because uh, because of its. Uh, Non-arithmetic, uh, non-non-re complexity, so it violates Gödel's theorem, etc. But in fact, it is useful in treatments of interpretability of theories. So it's not completely without uses this alpha star. But okay. So another point is that even if we restrict here to to re alphas, so alpha defines uniquely con consist alpha, but uh, different alpha alphas may produce non-equivalent consist alphas. And as I said, there is no way of canonically selecting one such consist, except for the situation when the theory T is finite. Then there is a kind of a, the most simple definition of T, namely the listing of all axioms of T. So somehow alpha of X says that X is axiom 1 or axiom 2 or axiom 3, etc. Uh, it turns out that this, cons this weakest, that would be the, the weakest consist, because uh, any other consist would imply would imply this consists for, for, a, for a finite theory. Okay, uh, but in general, if we are dealing with infinite theory like piano arithmetic, there can be alphas for which consists is weaker than the standard, or there are alphas for which consists is stronger than the standard. Of course, all such alphas are somehow pathological. But there is one example which I like very much, which, is, uh, which has a flavor of being natural and has the same, uh, the same uh, well, uh, it has a flavor of being, in fact, it is a natural result. And um, we will define a theory which is a natural theory which is equivalent to piano arithmetic in terms of externally, so to say, in terms of ability to generate theorems, but whose consist is much stronger, so to say, than the ordinary consist. Uh, and this, this is called, uh, I would call Parik. Probability. And it is formulated like this. So consider piano arithmetic, ordinary proof, theory, ordinary proof predicate, and consider add to it a new inference rule. Uh, and the inference rule is like this: when it, uh, when it is provable in the ordinary sense, uh, when phi is provable in the ordinary 
very sense. Then we can infer phi itself. So what does this rule? This rule, um, okay. So instead of proving phi directly, what we do, uh, we prove the fact of, of probability of phi. Okay? Usually, well, in all practical situations, when we want to show that something is provable, we usually produce a proof, so to say. But here is alternative suggestion. Instead of producing a proof, let's not do that. Let's really prove the probability and then conclude that the formula itself is also true. And but you, you switch to another notation for probability. Is it by accident or not? Uh, 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 which, PRF. which one? Did, uh, oh, PRF is, is a two argument. Ah, I see. Two I see. Uh, this I see. So, okay. okay. So this is not an X. Okay. okay. Let's prove alpha of X. Okay. Is there, there is a Y. Mm -hmm. PRF alpha. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the rule. Mm -hmm. It was considered by Rokic Parif in this in the 70s. And he showed that this rule is able to dramatically shorten some proofs. In fact shorten them in non-provably recursive ways. So for some theorems, uh, some theorems will really have much shorter proofs using this rule than the other. Right? But in this rule, probability is in which, for which alpha? For, for the standard alpha for PA. So let's say, let's call it probability in PA, where no, PA no, is just a... Not, so, so we are not allowed to use, to use the probability is, is, is provable using the same rule. No, it's not no, a problem. No, 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 it's just, it's just very ordinary. Mm -hmm. So here, this proof predicate is an ordinary sense. Mm -hmm. uh, one can consider various modifications of this rule, by the way, this is, that might be even interesting to study, but uh, uh, what I want to say is, is this. Uh, now, let's call this uh, the theory uh, PA, uh, PAP for, for Pari. Then it turns out that Okay, externally, what the remark is that externally, of course, uh, this PA with this rule is the same as PA. Right? Because they generate the same theorem. So, uh, if that formula is provable, then it is true, and therefore phi must be provable in PN arithmetic itself. So, we don't add anything new here. But on the other hand, one can show that, in fact, with piano arithmetic consistency of piano arithmetic does not imply consistency of piano arithmetic mm. with the rule. Your covariance or inference rules for the actions. What does it mean, consistency theory? Yeah, uh, exactly. So I have an inference rule, not actions. Yeah. But here, I, uh, as I said, this, <laughs> this example is much more recent than, than Pfefferman's example. So uh, you should modify Pfefferman's definition to uh, to speak about this, but you can also no, it's okay. since we are dealing with a fixed, uh, let's say, standard theory, so that there is no arbitrariness here in any choices. So we can no. just. But the question is, uh, can you generalize the Fermat's theorem if you allow alpha of all the formal standard axioms, but also formal yes. standard yes. rules? The, the answer is, the the answer is yes, for obvious reasons. Yes. So that's or yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The answer is the answer is definitely yes. So if you have <laughs> finitely many if or let's say, enumerably many inference rules, then... Uh, we don't care about the different inference Yes, yes. So, it, it, it was simply that Pfefferman at that time did not realize that it might be useful later for some, mm -hmm. for some later work. But, uh, mm -hmm. So, this is not provable, and moreover, uh, and this is really this... Uh, uh, what... Uh, one can actually characterize this, uh, the strength of this consistency assertion in the following way. So let's consider this so-called Turing progression. Piano arithmetic, piano arithmetic plus consist, and piano arithmetic. If we are talking about ordinary standard consistency here, and then uh, piano arithmetic plus con piano consist, piano, etc. So let's add iterated consistency assertion next stage. So let's extend piano arithmetic by by adding consistency assertions of, uh, of, of theory, so in the style of, of Q-ring, so to say. Then the union of all this sequence for, for finite iterations 
if you like, uh, let's call it PA omega, that's union of PA n of the Turing program. Uh, now, of course, this PA omega is also an, a theory given by a primitive recursive set of axioms, so there is nothing special about this PA omega. It fits very well with Pfeffer 1 setup. And it turns out that, in fact, within piano arithmetic, one can show that Parik probability is equivalent to uh, consistency of this PA omega. I think it is rather remarkable because on the left hand side we have uh, a theory which is equivalent to piano arithmetic externally. And on the right hand side we have an extension of piano arithmetic which is fairly much stronger than PA. But nonetheless, their consistency assertions turn out to be equivalent with each other. So this example uh, mostly impresses the, the, let's say, the proof series German style who actually compute ordinals of series and, and, and are used to thinking about ordinal as a kind of characteristic of a theory and not a characteristic of the proof system in, involved together with the theory because it shows that, let's say, the ordinal of that Parikh piano arithmetic is the same as, uh, well, it's much higher than the ordinal of, of piano, so it's a uh, piano omega, so to say, it corresponds to something which is the effect of adding more axioms. Okay, so this is, I think this is very, yeah. <laughs> this is a very nice observation. Well, speaking about ordinals, if you take higher ordinals than omega, uh -huh. do you have for this one higher ordinal a similar characterization in terms of home alpha e for any alpha, for any reasonable alpha, or, or for any alpha of square ratio, so to speak? Um, you have to modify here the rule. If, if you want to match, so to say, the consist, if you, uh, I guess one can, I don't know any natural examples like this because I, I actually didn't think about that, but uh, I guess there is nothing which would prevent us from having that. So if you, one can imagine that there are rules for me in a similar manner or involving more uh, other forms of reflection which would yield even stronger, so to say, uh, consistency assertions. Okay, somewhat in the same spirit, so, uh, somewhat in the same spirit, so uh, we, by the way, this calculation is due to Lindstrom and myself, so to say. It's, uh, but uh, uh, what we have, uh, we have another nice example which I call the Visser square root formula. <laughs> So uh, it's about the following. It's about another particular theory. Uh, and this particular theory is a uh, theory known as I delta zero plus x. For, for those of you who don't know uh, what it means, uh, I'm not going to explain it in detail, but basically it's piano arithmetic where induction is restricted to bounded formulas and one has exponentiation within the language. So one has uh, a function representing exponentiation within the language. So this is a very let's say, useful theory, it's, it's kind of the uppermost level of all bounded arithmetic theories, if, if one wants to think about that in this way. Now, okay, so this, uh, for this theory T, one can consider two notions of probability. One is, uh, uh, let's say, the ordinary probability, and another is probability in the cut free sense. So this means that x is provable in a sequent calculus with cuts, for example, and this is that x is provable in a sequent calculus without cuts from this from this theory. And then it turns out that the following is true. So in this theory, or even in a weaker system like S21, for example, one has that uh, cut-free probability is the square root of the ordinary probability, namely. Uh, ordinary x is provable in the ordinary sense if and only if it's, it's cut-free probability is cut-free provable. Okay. 
if you think about it, it's rather remarkable because it has <laughs> this characterization has nothing to do with cut elimination or something like this. It's a different <laughs> it's a different style of characterization. Yeah. It is somewhat similar to that situation with the Parikh rule because Parikh rule, in some sense, Parikh probability would, would correspond to omega times iterated ordinary probability. And here we have the same relation, but downwards. So if one starts <laughs> with the cut free probability, then iterating it twice, one obtains ordinary probability. It's a remarkable formula due to algorithm. And it implies, for example, that consistency of that system T is equivalent to double consistency, consistency cut free of uh, T plus consistency cut free of T. Right. So this is a, this is another result of the same kind. So we have two probability operators corresponding to the same external theory and they have totally different strengths of consistency assertion. Um, but, but still, in this weak theory, mm -hmm. the, the na notion of the natural, when we say yeah. the probability in a natural yeah. way, yeah. there is no doubt what we yeah. mean really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, in fact, from the point of view of bounded arithmetic, this theory is not at all, not at all weak. So to say, it's yeah, yeah. Well, it is very really strong. <laughs> 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 Stronger than one one wanted to have, but uh, okay. But uh, so more or less everything, our standard way of encoding all these things would fit into this into this framework. So there's nothing. Uh, S21, you do for this result S21. You open to it with I delta zero. Um, with I delta zero. Or, or it, 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 there will be ordinary complications. Uh, there will be that, there will be many more complications with I delta zero. S S12 is uh, is is better. So but S12 is included in T, I guess. Yes. Uh -huh. It's it's a proper part or a small part. Okay. Um, now we, uh, uh, I have exhausted, uh, so to say, the preliminary examples, and now I'm, I'm going to formulate the theorems I was, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about during my next lecture, obviously. Okay, so um, and maybe before doing that, I, I should also mention that, of course, there is a very general, so to say, abstract formulation of Google's second incompleteness theorem, which is due to low. Right, uh, and which tells you that whenever we have a formula which satisfies certain derivability conditions, and I'm not going to write it, write them down because many of you have seen them in the standard proof of uh, Gold's second incompleteness theorem. So when we have these derivability conditions, and the theory has some minimal requirements, like uh, is able to represent all, all primitive recursive functions, for example, then. Uh, Second incompleteness theorem holds for this theory. So uh, this is a loop formulation. It's, uh, uh, it it is a very uh, I would say very uh, a nice and around around uh, formulation of that of that theorem. But uh, the disadvantage is that for any particular theory or framework, one has to check those conditions. So these conditions are not coming for free. So to say. And usually, it's hard work to check that uh, these conditions uh, hold. Okay, so for weak systems in, in particular, uh, it's always a matter of, uh, of checking. Okay, now I will formulate uh, my results. Okay. So. Okay, to begin with, I would like to, okay, so roughly speaking, Pudlock's theorem tells that Gödel's second incompleteness theorem holds for any theory which can interpret a very weak system of arithmetic, namely so-called Robinson's arithmetic Q. Robinson's arithmetic Q is piano arithmetic without induction, more or less. So let me just write out these axioms of Q, just to be sure uh, that everyone remembers. So that, uh, Again, these axioms are quite standard, and we will also meet them in the next lecture when I will explain the proof because it somewhat depends on
on this axiom. Cube. So we have axioms for successor, which uh, which are saying that okay, the uh, successor zero is not a successor of anything, and successor is a kind of one-to-one uh, -one function. Uh, uh, and the small dot is plus. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it's sometimes plus. <laughs> you, see, you see how it is easy to get an inconsistency. I still have the Okay. So um, recursive equations for plus and times, and this last axiom, which is playing mostly technical role. In the standard examination of piano arithmetic, it is sometimes absent because one can actually prove it using induction. But uh, Q was formulated by Tarski, Robinson, and uh, Mastowski, I guess, in order to, to prove, uh, let's say, general version of first incompleteness theorem, that any theory containing Q would be incomplete, or, or, and, and also essentially undecidable. Essentially undecidable. Uh, so the role of Q is that it is able to represent all recursive functions, all RE predicates, in the following way, that whenever we have a function uh, okay then there is a formula representing the graph of that function in the language of arithmetic and for that formula one can actually prove the following fact for if f of let's say m equals n then okay q proves f of m equals y if and only if y equals n. So this is a kind of representation of recursive functions in arithmetic as it is presented in all, in all standard textbooks including Mendelssohn but uh, the point is that q is sufficient here. So you, you for, 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 for example for beta function of Godel we yeah. don't need induction to... to yes, to the point is that this representation is very weak because we are dealing with numerals here. So it is essentially proving facts about concrete numbers. Mm -hmm. So Q is very weak in terms of proving anything with quantifiers. But Lea, uh, don't we need something more powerful to prove the usual properties of uh, beta function? We, we need some I mean, we need to prove somehow some properties yeah. of yeah. the division. Let me let me explain this without inductions. Yeah.